Hey, welcome to the Small Business Made Simple podcast, brought to you by socialmediaandmarketing.com.au. Being in business is never easy, but it can be simple, or at least simpler. Join me, your host Jen Donovan, every week where we focus on marketing, social media and working towards simplifying your business. You with me? Let's do this. If you're gonna dream it, dream it big, cause someone out there listening, everyone's got a voice to give and it's time I heard you whistling, cause there's no point at all, oh, 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 and dream small. Why, hey there, my fabulous listener. Welcome to episode 236 of the Small Business Made Simple podcast. Thank you, as always, for lending me your ears today. I know there are lots of podcast choices out there, and I really do appreciate you making my podcast one of them. Today, we're going to go deep on Instagram. I'm going to talk about five new features that you may or may not know are on Instagram that can help you build your business, your profile and your audience on Instagram. I haven't done an Instagram one for a little while, so I'm a little bit excited to dig into these five new features. Um, if you are enjoying this podcast, you could always take a screenshot and share it on your socials and tag me because I would like to get to know you a little bit, like you get to know me a little bit every single week as well. Now, this podcast is a little bit link heavy, as in I've got all sorts of links for you to go and follow up from my five new features. So if you want to find all those links, the best place to go is my website and the this podcast um, and find the show notes for this podcast, you will find them at socialmediaandmarketing.com.au slash 236. But before we get all Instagrammy, have you had a chance to listen to last week's episode? I chatted with Michelle Marks about vision and mission statements for small businesses. It was a really great episode with so much gold and just I think made a lot of you rethink what vision and mission statements actually look like for a small business, even solopreneur. I've had some great conversation with some listeners over the last week about that, and I'm sure that a few of them have reached out to Michelle as well. So if you haven't listened to that one, head back and listen to episode 235 when we're finished going deep on Instagram today. Like I said, it's been a little while since I've been down an Instagram rabbit hole on my podcast. So um, let's have a look at some of the new small business useful features that have come out in Instagram in the last few months. Instagram never stops to surprise us, really. It's always evolving and they are as much as I hate to give Zuckerberg a compliment, really showing us the way as far as being innovative and listening to what the users want and creating better experience for their customers and also showing us what resilience looks like because they have a lot of competition and they are big. They do have big teams. I get that. But from an innovative listening and resilience point of view, Instagram, we have a lot to learn from them. Sorry, Zuckerberg, that is the only compliment you are going to get from me today. Um, if Instagram is your platform, then you may have seen loads of changes that have um, been over the last few months. Some have come to Australia, some of them we're still waiting for down here, um, and some of them you will be excited about, and others maybe not so much. So let's talk about the first one. The first one, um, actually, before I talk about the first one, the trick on the platform like Instagram is to be using the tools of the platform that will help your business grow. Because I'm going to tell you about five of them. They may not relate to your business. You may not want to do them. And that's okay. We've got to learn just because we're on Instagram doesn't mean we need to use everything and do everything. So don't let me overwhelm you. This is really just me having a discussion with you about five new features that I've seen. So the first one is Meta Verified. So this is Meta's next iteration on making some more coin from us and really bringing the platform from a free platform to a paid platform for small business owners. Um, regardless of whether or not you do paid marketing, now there's the opportunity to get the Meta Verified blue tick and you are actually going to pay for it. You can pay for it for your Instagram profile and, of course, your Facebook profile as well. They are both different transactions. They will both cost you, I think, around $19 a month um, Australian. So I think it's around 11 US or something like that. I must say that this one did surprise me because I'd been watching this for a little while. And Meta did announce not 
that long ago that it was um, removing increased reach as a subscription feature. But here we are. Here we are. And this is one of the things that they are potentially promising us with the blue tick is um, increased reach. Twitter, of course, tried to implement the blue tick. Uh, I'm not a Twitter person. I'm not a Twitter expert. But my understanding is that it wasn't a very successful revenue stream for Twitter. So what does the blue tick mean? Well, it's basically Instagram's way of verifying your authenticity of your account. So that you are who you say you are. It says to the world, this account is real. This account owner is a genuine person. It can, I guess, quickly build that trust and credibility um, for your followers or perhaps even the strangers that come across your profile because you've got this blue tick so they know that you are for real. A verified account is more likely to be seen by a wider audience, but that's not proven yet. Um, certainly the unpaid version of the blue tick um, that some people have had the blue tick for a long time, that version um, did actually, uh, you know, push you to a wider audience. Will the paid model do it? Look, it's unproven at the moment because it's just so new. Now, because it's meta, I do have two problems with this. First of all, and this is actually my crankiness coming out, I'm a little bit cranky that just because Meta can't work out a way to stop all of us having our accounts hacked, our ID stolen and being scammed by fake accounts, that now we have to pay to be authentic. I think it's a bit of a cop out. I feel that they created this platform. They've let these fake people on. They've let, let this corruption happen. And now it's up to us. And it's kind of a bit of a how dare you sort out your shit. Basically, this is your problem. You created the platform. This is your problem. You created the platform. You allowed the bots. You allowed the bad people to get an account. But now it seems to be up to us to ensure our own safety and pay for that safety, pay for that trust. Um, this is what big businesses do. They make the little people pay for the problems that they actually created. So I am a little bit cranky at the fact that now we have to pay for a blue tick, that they didn't find another solution for stopping us being hacked, for having our ID stolen and for us being scammed. Anyway, off my high horse, I get. Secondly, will it work? And is it worth it? Well, my answer is actually maybe. I think that if you are, um, as with most of the new features on a platform like this, an early adopter, you might actually see some extra reach. Um, but as it becomes more mainstream and everyone has an authentic blue tick, and this will happen, don't, you know, mark my words, this will happen because if it's to build trust and authenticity, if you don't have one, then straight away people are like, are you real? So this will become mainstream and we will have to get one. And then I can't see how it could help you get more reach because if everyone's got more reach, no one's got more reach. Like the maths just isn't there. Of course, it's not just all about reach. They say you'll get access to new features, improved security, priority support, which I had a bit of a chuckle of. I'm like, there's no non-priority support. So calling it a priority, priority support just seemed like a bit of a um, oxymoron. But anyway, again, I'll move on. Um, and of course, more opportunities to collaborate, whatever that actually means. I haven't gone into detail as to what that means. So you're probably thinking, well, Jen, will you do it? Will you get the blue tick? And I have to say, if I'm honest, yeah, I probably will. My business is a marketing business and it's my job to test and measure things. This is what I do. So I can go out to the big wide world on my podcast or my speaking opportunities and my keynotes and my workshops and tell you what's working and what's not working. Making. So this is something that I will actually have to test myself. I'd rather do it, test it, um, see whether it's worth it or not, and therefore have that, um, I guess, that knowledge to pass on to other people about it. But at the moment, I'm just cranky that we have to do it at all. But yes, I will probably do it. If you want to know more, then I do have a link, uh, a meta link on how you can get meta verified in the show notes, which of course you'll find at socialmediamarketing.com.au slash 236.
Okay, the second big update or new feature is one that I am actually a little bit excited about and it's not here yet. Well, it's not for me anyway. You may have it. It's called Broadcast Channels and I'd actually bet that you probably haven't got it because Zuckerberg is the only broadcast channel that I belong to at the moment. So whether the rollout hasn't quite gone as well as they had liked, the uptake's not as great, I don't know. But I am actually a big fan of anything that is around community building. So it's basically a new messaging space that acts as a direct line between me, the creator, and you, my follower who want to hear all the latest news directly, uh, so no missing stuff in people's feeds. For me, it actually feels very podcasty, although I don't think it's going to be for live video. Uh, I think it's written content at the moment, and I'm not even sure it's a two-way street because certainly I belong to Mark Zuckerberg's broadcast channel and no one interacts with him other than a thumbs up and a love and that sort of thing. So whether when it gets to the little people, it will become a two-way street somewhere where you can actually have conversations like in messenger or something like that and that remains to be seen I think that is the way it goes but anything that builds community within a platform I like many people say that Facebook groups are dead well I really think that a dead Facebook group is dead but other ones that have great leaders um, people who understand the uh, the value of building community, then those Facebook groups are thriving. So yeah, I'm all about community building and I really like this. So I'm looking forward to getting my own broadcast channel at some stage, although I have to say I'm a little bit frustrated again, because every time I go to apply for early access to a broadcast channel, it tells me I've already got access to a broadcast channel, which I don't, or I can't find it, or it's just not coming up. And I keep updating my app all the time, hoping that one day it will appear. So far, no good. But anyway, broadcast channels, looking forward to that. Again, if you want to know more about them, I've got a link in the show notes, um, a direct link to Instagram's information about broadcast channels and how you can apply for your own. Um, the next little hack that Instagram has is um, a new little feature called quiet mode. Did you know that you can silence notifications by using quiet mode? Um, you can choose a period of time that you don't want to be given notifications for, so quiet. Um, and you could choose like between 11 and 7 or better still, you could choose between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. To do it, you just go to your profile, go to the menu, settings, notifications, and then quiet mode. It's a great little tip for those of you, those of us, <laughs> who are totally distracted during the day by Instagram when perhaps we should be working and doing other things. So quiet mode, cool little introduction feature there, I thought. Um, the next little feature that has come along in the past few months, um, this one was actually late last year, was the ability to add music to your posts. So just a normal post posted the normal way through Instagram on the app. Now you can add music to that. So um, it's just in the menu where you, just before you click share, so uh, where you'll find other features such as location, tagging people, tagging products, and now you will see add music. If you don't see it, it could be because you haven't got a creator profile or you haven't got a professional profile. Um, but otherwise you should see it. I think it's a pretty cool feature. I haven't seen it being used heaps because we kind of associate music with reels at the moment, but it is there. Um, so if you didn't know it was there, then maybe you could go and use it and have some fun in your posts as well, of course, as um, some fun in your reels with music. All right, so that was number four. Number five, my last feature that I wanted to chat to you about today. And look, there's been literally tons of new features on Instagram in the last few months. So I could have chosen 10, but I've decided to do a short, sharp episode. Um, and so I've just chosen the five that I guess have lit me up the most and I think will make the biggest difference to you as well. So my last one is scheduling. Wouldn't that be great? Being able to schedule content in the Instagram app. I think this is going to be a game changer. Um, I have it. Um, you do have to have a professional account to schedule though. Uh, so if you don't have a professional account, then 
maybe you don't have the ability to schedule and that could be why. But um, you can only schedule at this point, I believe, um, reels and posts. I think they're the only two options, but just um, it's really easy to do. Again, if you were just doing a post, you would do what you would normally do on the app. And when you get to the screen where you write your caption, uh, you would scroll all the way down and click advanced settings and you'll see schedule post there and you pick your day and you pick your time. I really love this idea, especially for reels because Meta Business Suite is pretty subpar when it comes to scheduling in reels and things like that just doesn't have the features Um, and I really look forward to being able to schedule stories with all the stickers and the music and all of that that you can do on stories where at the moment you can't schedule them either inside the app or of course in meta either so um yeah, that would be really cool feature as well but I do like the idea of being able to schedule um, on the Instagram app It'll be interesting to see whether it will increase any reach as opposed to using a third-party platform like Planoly or anything like that. I have my doubts that it will, but again, test and measure, watch and see. That is um, that is my job as you know a marketing strategist, so I will be looking forward to seeing what that looks like. If you could schedule stories, though, that would actually make my Instagram life pretty full. Maybe that's a little bit dramatic. Maybe it would just make my Instagram life better. Um, So, yeah, they're the five little cool features that are new to Instagram that I wanted to tell you about today. And I think as we get more and more features on an app like Instagram, it's really important for us to think about the fundamentals of marketing again because we can't be all things to everyone and we can't be everywhere at once and we shouldn't be either of those things either. So maybe it's about time you sat down again and had a little bit of a think about where your audience actually hangs out, what platforms are really best for you to attract your clients or your customers that you need, and within those platforms, which features you're going to use to attract those ideal clients or those ideal customers. So they might be on Instagram, but where on Instagram are they? I think that it's no longer about choosing a platform to be on. It's about choosing particular features on those platforms. So you might think, I'm just going to use Instagram just for stories because I know that my audience hangs out in stories. So you won't use Reels. So you won't use broadcast channels. You won't go live. I'm not recommending you do or you don't do these things, but this is these are the, the decisions that now we need to start making as content creators. All right, so how did you go? Did you learn something today? Did you hear about a feature that's made you a little bit excited about trialing or a feature that maybe you didn't know was available on Instagram? Well, I hope so. I hope spending these 20 minutes with me was worth it for your um, Instagram life and making your Instagram life a little bit better. I would love you to share this episode with another small business owner who loves the gram and would also like to know about these features. Um, I think you know, it would be really cool for you to pass this on. And if you've got any questions, head into the Facebook group, Like-Minded Business Owners, uh, and let me know. One day I might be saying, you know, if you've got any questions or thoughts, I'll head over to my broadcast channel. But I'm not saying that just yet until I get one. Meta, if you're listening, I want one. <laughs> If you love this episode and found it valuable, other than sharing it with another business friend, I would love you to leave a rating and a review on the podcast um, wherever you listen. It's one of my goals this year to spread um, my knowledge further and wider and help even small business owners through this podcast. And you can help me by you can help me achieve that by leaving me a rating and a review. Otherwise, I will see you next week on episode 237. But in the meantime, if we're not already hanging out on social, let's get social on social. And whatever you do, remember my small business peep. As my opening song says, there is no point in dreaming small. No time like a present. Tell it like a feel it. Say it proud. Be true and let us see you for the star that you are. I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, the Yorta Yorta people, on which I record this podcast and conduct my business today and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend this respect to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people here with us today as well.